What the heck is going on? This is Bearded Storyteller here, and I got some updates on the old Suburban, Big Gray. A uh, couple of things have changed, not much, but uh, just wanted to give you guys the update. It is super windy today, and I don't have my microphone, so please forgive me for that. Without further ado, guys, so I got the tires changed on it. I got the uh, 35s put on here. Pretty big, beefy 35s, too. I mean, they are some thick boys. Thickies. Yeah, I got them put on the stock wheels for right now. Uh, I'm going to be getting some different wheels for it eventually. And we got them 315, 75, 16s. And uh, the video may make these tires look a little bit more bald than they actually are but i can assure you these things have a ton of skin still on them i mean lots of skin very very thick tires so anyway i do have it lifted in the front just a little bit uh just adjusting the torsion bars they're not up all the way but uh I did raise it just a little bit in the front. Of course, the back unfortunately does have just a little bit of squat, which uh, whenever I get the full lift kit for it, that will no longer be an issue. So, uh, looking forward to having those put on. Um, too many keys here. There we go. Interior still sucks, but uh, oh god, I did take this thing and go get it inspected today. And of course, uh, it passed, you can see it passed its inspection. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. No, of course not, it's too bright outside, middle of the daytime. But anyway, I installed some blue uh, bulbs in the dash, so this all lights up blue colored. It's like an aqua blue. But anywho, I got that done. Um, I put a new uh, fuel filter in it. I still got a ton of parts over here that I still got to put in the thing. But anyway, still got parts on the way, still got parts, you know. Oh, Jesus. This thing sits up a little higher than I'm used to. Uh, okay, let's get the hood popped. Let's take a look at what I did under there. Don't look too closely. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. So, man, it's windy. It's never windy any other day of the week. By God, it's windy today. Okay, so I put new coil packs in it. Um... Waiting on my buddy to get off because I'm saving the spark plugs and uh, the wires for him to do because I really don't want to do those. Did put a brand new serpentine belt on it, which for some reason it's starting to wear like a little groove in the belt there. But anyway, it is a brand new belt. You know, look down there and see the, the letters on it. Brand new belt. So it's no longer squeaking, which is quite nice. Uh, this here, you're probably wondering what in the hell, Bearded Storyteller? That's actually to keep this spark plug wire off of this, uh, this shaft right here, because that's what turns your, your front tires and whatnot, and if it gets hung up, then you're not going to be able to turn, and, uh, that's not good. So I replaced the mass airflow sensor with a brand new one. Now I might be able to see, tell, brand new the uh, throttle position sensor, air idle control valve, the fuel pressure regulator, which is up under this cover here that I'm not taking off. It's actually got a bolt right there that holds it in place. Anyway, ignition coil packs, brand new. Now there is a phenomenon going on with this thing that I'm super, super confused about. So we pull the dipstick and look, the oil looks pretty normal. You know, it's a little bit over full, but it looks pretty normal for the most part, you know? It's definitely due for an oil change, but there's nothing weird going on with the oil. Well, boy, I tell you what. 
This is, uh, damn it. All right, there we go. Okay, big old 20 foot long freaking dipstick. Coolant keeps on leaking out of it, which is because the water pump has a leak right there at the pulley. So that's kind of unfortunate. But this right here is really, really strange. I don't know what's going on with this. But there's like this moisture substance underneath the oil cap. And it's like this white, foamy, I don't know. And there's like moisture inside of it. And you look here, and there's like that white, creamy, foamy kind of thing going on there. Now, the previous owner for the last three years only drove this thing four miles a day. Uh back and forth to work her job was uh two miles away from her house and so she literally only drove this thing just back and forth to work so it's done a lot of sitting over the last three years and uh well as you can see i need to put this all the way on and scoot it up just a little bit i uh, just now noticed that but anyway these are the wrong coil packs for this engine these are not the ones that I ordered and not the ones on the description not the ones that this vehicle is supposed to have so I just uh, kinda had to make it work um, they do work there is a uh, no check engine light which is which is good I finally got rid of the check engine light so uh, Anyway, get you another look at them big old beefy 35s right there. I was going to put 37s on it, but I found a really good deal on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, both of these windows I got replaced, as I, as I stated before, and now I have to unlock this door. Yeah. Okay, suspect. No. Okay, so I still have these brand new plug wires right here that I'm, my buddy's going to install those. Uh, still got to put the intake gaskets on. That's these big, whoops, hang on. Yeah, I can't be dropping trash in the yard now. Alright, so spark plug wires, intake gaskets, uh, empty box, that probably had something in it. These here are the knock sensors that go underneath of the, uh, yep, knock sensors and cam sensors that go underneath the intake. Uh, cabin air filter right here, which I'll put that in sometime. This is the small serpentine belt. This vehicle has two serpentine belts, and this is the little bitty one that powers the power steering pump. However, it still looks really good. Uh, this here is the AC fan motor speed resistor 9000. Uh, so I'll get that put in sometime whenever I'm not feeling 100% lazy. This poor interior is just so trashed out, I'm not even kidding you. Anyway, so there's that. In here I have the fuel pump assembly. Um, this is really cool because this is just a drop-in unit. Um, all you do is just take this unit here, you got your, your fuel pump and everything is already in here, and uh, you just drop it in the tank. But see, I'm kind of waiting to do that because I'm kind of dreading doing that because that's going to be a pretty fairly big job. These are the old bulbs right here that went into the dashboard, the old iridescent bulbs or whatever. This is the... Uh, pickup tube o-ring right here because the oil pressure is pretty low so i'm gonna put that in there i have an oil and an oil filter on the way as well i need to take this in the house and charge it this is actually my duty flashlight for work stick that in the old pocket there and uh any whoops i don't know i accidentally bumped that my apologies all right so there's all that stuff in the back here we got our uh, OBD scan tool which we had to use to pass inspection so these are really good if you're uh, a little bit crooked and you need to pass vehicle inspection 
and your check engine light or your ABS light or some bullcrap light is on on your dashboard, get you one of these and clear the code right before you pull into the parking lot and that'll help you pass your inspection. Assuming they don't hook up a computer to your stuff. Over here, uh, I got this stuff today. Uh, got this at the uh, Wally World. So this here is uh, Lucas High Mileage Oil Stabilizer. Supposed to help with some stuff. So whenever I do my oil change, I'll throw a little bit of this in there to try to clean up that lifter ticking going on. And then here we got us some sea foam. I've heard that this is some pretty good stuff. My uncle, who's been working on Chevrolet vehicles for the last 54 years, swears by this stuff. That it actually cleans up your lifters. Where's it at? Yeah, quietens noisy lifters. And mine, I think, has a stuck lifter. I'm fairly sure. Back here we have just junk, junk, and more dead gum junk. I'm probably going to end up throwing this tire away just because I don't know what kind of condition it's in. It came with the vehicle. But anyway, we just got, you know, tools and just miscellaneous junk back here. So, and then more, you know, just miscellaneous junk, empty coolant jugs and whatnot. I didn't realize how bad the audio was in my last video, my first video. So I'll go ahead and crank this thing up real quick and let you guys hear it. Just so you can uh, witness it actually because that first video was terrible. Dashboard still all busted up. I'm going to have to replace um, this bezel as well as the top of the dash. This thing needs several thousand dollars worth of work. There you go. Okay, there we are. I think, yeah, I think it's that one. All right. Okay. It's still trying to relearn the idle. Ooh. Yeah, that's the highest I've seen that oil pressure gauge yet, boy. All right. I think that water pump pulley is actually going bad. Pretty sure that's what I'm hearing from grinding noise. But anyway. It does go away after a minute or two. Anyway, oil pressure still a little bit on the low side. The brake light comes on and goes off. You know, that light there comes on, goes off. That flashes for a while, then goes off. You know, it's just kind of strange. Anyway, there's a lot of phenomenons going on with this vehicle. I'm gonna have to get worked out. That's gotta get replaced like ASAP. But anyway, little by little. These tires here are about $1,500 new and I got them for 400 bucks on Marketplace. Apparently, uh, the guy bought them for his uh, 07 or 06 Chevy Silverado, and he didn't like them because, well, you can see I already done it, but he did not have his bumper cut, so they rubbed on the, on the, uh, the deal, and whenever he turned all the way, you know, they would rub on the inside of the fender and whatnot, and he didn't like them because of how loud they are going down the highway. So he switched them out, and uh, he only put about 200 miles on these. You know, all of them, all four of them. He only put 200 miles on them, and then he changed them out for some 33-inch all-terrain, nitto, whatever. So, uh, anyway, yep. So I got him for a pretty good deal. He wanted 500 for him, and I, I talked him down to 400. So he went ahead and took the deal on that. But anywho, yep, that's old Big Gray right there. And of course, we got our slam box right here and lifted Suburban here. So they kind of, kind of favor each other a little bit. Got the lowered box. 
dead gum roof line of this thing comes up to like the top of the hood <laughs> it's pretty funny suburban sits up pretty high actually and it's windy good heaven yeah that's some good looking tires though i like them i am doing a uh, a six inch lift kit on this thing i'm gonna do like a leveling kit and uh, of course you know shocks and everything so uh did discover it's got a little dent down there on the quarter panel i didn't actually notice that until just here recently but uh yeah it's got a pretty pretty good little wop down here but anywho that's the latest updates on the old bourbon and uh still got a lot of stuff going on with it still got parts on the way like i said so whenever i get some more progress done on it i'll uh, be sure to update you guys it's probably gonna be a little bit of a slower build just because you know parts are expensive and you know we got all of our vehicles here that we're having to work on and do stuff with and whatnot got the little silver car over there we're doing some stuff too and whatnot so anyway that's the old bourbon we'll go around and take one last look at the other side real quick still got that shiny ass ball hitch we ain't gonna do nothing with because this thing ain't pulling nothing yeah there you go uh, all right guys well that'll be it for today if y'all got any questions comments or concerns be sure you put it down in the comments if you want to be sure to like and subscribe y'all take care have a great day don't do anything i wouldn't do